Next for consideration is S-359, the Supreme Court Ethics, Recusal, and Transparency Act. CERT. The past several months have seen a steady stream of news reports highlighting ethical failures by the highest court in the land, the Supreme Court justices appointed by both Republican and Democratic presidents. Justice Clarence Thomas traveled the world on billionaire Harlan Crow's yacht and private jet. Crow bought the home of Justice Thomas's mother and allowed her to continue living there rent free. He even paid for the education of a relative of Justice Thomas. None of this, none of this was included in Justice Thomas's financial disclosures. Justice Samuel Alito took an all expense paid luxury fishing trip to Alaska. He traveled there on the private jet of billionaire hedge fund manager Paul Singer. He stayed at a fishing lodge of conservative donor Robin Arkley. Like Justice Thomas, Justice Alito did not disclose any of these, these receipts. In explaining this, Justice Alito said we did, he did not believe he was required to disclose the private jet travel because he was seat, sitting in a seat that would otherwise have been empty. Justice Sonia Sotomayor used her tax-funded court staff to promote additional sales of her books in conjunction with speaking engagements. She failed to recuse herself from cases involving her book publisher. If any of the senators or even the staff members sitting in this room today were involved in similar activities, they would be in violation of the ethical rules that govern Congress. That's because all of us are subject to enforceable codes of conduct that prohibit us from accepting gifts and using taxpayers' funds for personal gain. We are required to make public disclosures about our finances and there are consequences if we fail to meet these standards. But the same is not true for the nine justices across the street. Unlike every other federal official, Supreme Court justices are not bound by a code of ethical conduct. They are the most powerful judges in America, and yet they are not required to follow even the most basic ethical standards. The CERT Act we are considering would change that. It would finally require the Supreme Court to adopt an enforceable code of conduct. It would also add new recusal and transparency requirements to federal law. In this way, it would bring all nine justices of the Supreme Court in line with every other federal judge in America. Requiring a code of conduct for Supreme Court justices should not be controversial. Historians and legal scholars from across the political spectrum agree that legislation imposing a code of conduct on the Supreme Court is both necessary and well within Congress's congressional authority. Members of this committee on both sides of the aisle have long led efforts to make the Supreme Court more accountable and transparent. In 2021, our colleague Senator Cornyn, along with our colleague Senator Coons, introduced the Courthouse Ethics and Transparency Act, which required all federal judicial officers, including Supreme Court justices, to file disclosures of certain securities transactions, just like members of Congress. That bill passed the Senate unanimously, both parties, and was signed into law by President Biden, and the Supreme Court is abiding by this congressional action. Two years ago, this committee, with the support of five Republican senators, favorably reported cameras in the Courtroom Act, a bipartisan bill that I've long introduced with Senator Grassley, and which would require the Supreme Court to permit television coverage of all sessions of the court with only limited exceptions. Some have suggested that Democrats are pursuing Supreme Court ethics reform to target the court's current right-wing majority. Far from it, the reforms we are proposing would apply in equal force to all justices. And as I mentioned, it was more than 11 years ago and a very different Supreme Court when I first urged the Chief Justice to adopt a binding code of conduct. Unfortunately, he did not accept my suggestion. Since then, as more and more stories have emerged of justice's ethical lapses, the American people's confidence in the Supreme Court has dropped to an all-time low. My colleagues, my colleagues, the Supreme Court term begins with the announcement by the Marshal of the United States Supreme Court. He strikes a gavel and he says, the Honorable, 
the Chief Justice and Associate Justices of the Supreme Court of the United States. Oye, oye, oye. All persons having businesses before the Honorable, the Supreme Court of the United States, are admonished to draw near and give their attention for the court is now sitting. God save the United States and this Honorable Court. Three times the Marshal declares that the Supreme Court is honorable. With the enactment of this legislation, our highest court in the land can more rightly make, more rightly make that claim.